I'm out with my boys today. This is the Honda 250 CRF 250RX. Good morning, everybody. Kyle here, and yes, I'm out. This video is on the Honda CRF 250RX. Here's the thing you need to know about what I learned on this particular ride. So we're camping out here in the, in the desert, and I had been on the 450 just kind of messing around on the road. Um, and then I jump on the 250 and we had to ride about a mile of dirt road to get down to this trailhead, this place where I've started recording this. And I'm just riding with my boys. They're on 85 two strokes. And as you're kind of going down the road, you start to feel like, oh man, this, you know, there's, this bike is a little bit boring and it doesn't have a ton of power because it's, it's the 250 and I'm not like, I'm not like easily able to just wheelie. Like you get on the 450 and you're able to just wheelie anywhere you want, right? And I guess that's one of the reasons why people like 450s. But you get on the 250 out on a dirt road and dirt roads are not that much fun anyway, but then you go on a dirt road on a 250 and it's not fun really at all. Um, but then what I noticed was the second that you jump onto an actual trail where you're encountering actual bumps and obstacles and turns and jumps and twists and uphills and downhills, and then you're like, oh my gosh, this bike is so bloody fast. You can see you have turned up the speed just a little bit right here. And as soon as you get into an area like this, you gone from your mind, it is completely evaporated that this bike doesn't have enough power. It has so much power. So, I mean, it's funny because I think some people are probably like saying riding a block around the street, around the neighborhood, and they're like, oh, my 250 doesn't have enough power. Get the bike out into an actual situation and they've got enough power. I was just watching Supercross this last weekend, the Atlanta Supercross on press day. They had like a 110 foot triple. And the 250 guys, well, all the, obviously not all the 250 guys were doing it, but the, no one wanted to hit this jump, even the 450 guys. And yet there were guys on 250s that were able to hit and clear this 110 foot triple. Now, of course, Hunter Lawrence did come up short on it one time. And anyway, I won't go into that. But the point is this bike has so much power. There's so, it's so snappy. There's so much power here. And yes, there are certain advantages to the 450 over the 250. I mean, but if you're just going to go ride all day um, and just slam stuff and hit stuff, the, the, the 250 gives you some serious advantages because you're not lugging around so much weight. Like every corner, every little thing that you do on the 450 takes just a little bit more energy. And we noticed that here. Uh, obviously, this is just the 250 ride. But the next day, I went with the boys on the 450 and you can just tell, like, there are certain points about the 450 that just kind of wear you out a little bit more, you know? And the boys were like, which one did you like better? And I mean, for riding, I think, I think for riding slower with them, like here, what we're doing is just like a little bit slower riding. I think I was a little bit more happy on the 250, um, just because I'm just kind of chilling with them or whatever. It isn't that you can't chill on the 450, but I, it just, it's just the 450 is just begging you to go faster, harder, harder. It takes a little bit more out of you. And so on a, on a just kind of like mess around ride like this, where I'm going with the boys, you know, this isn't like my top speed or anything. I'm just out there enjoying them and they're riding fast enough that it's, it's still fun. But I think the 250 just makes a little bit better sense for me in those situations. You know, one thing I also noticed, and this shouldn't come as a shock to anybody, um, but uh, specifically the next day, which I don't know how much footage I have of that when I was on the 450, the speeds are just a touch slower. We were doing something that was a little bit more technical uh, than what you're seeing right here in some of the spots. And yeah, you get that heat coming up like the like the four strokes just have so much more heat that just builds up in them. There's so much more uh, metal and, you know, <laughs> Uh, aluminum and, and hard parts down there on these four strokes that they just, they generate more heat and they are, they just do run hotter, you know? And so if you're going to have, if you're going to have a four stroke, like if you, like if you were going to have this as your primary bike, this CRF 250RX or the CRF 450RX, and you want to be able to ride with your kids and do some slower stuff, or maybe your girlfriend or your wife or whoever it is, probably going to need to install a radiator fan. You know, I, I just did a video uh, I think my last video was about installing a radiator fan on a KTM two stroke. And honestly on like most of the time uh, when I'm riding with my boys, I have never, like if I'm on, if I'm on with my boys, 
my fans don't ever really come on on my two strokes because we're not doing slow enough, technical enough. They're moving along quick enough. Like this much air flowing through a radiator um, is enough to keep a two stroke cool for sure. There's definitely enough air going through there. So you wouldn't need a radiator on a two stroke, but on a four stroke, you're, you're going to need probably a radiator fan if you're going to do this type of riding with your boys they just get hotter now i wasn't boiling over or anything because the speeds are you know enough here on this ride that it's not a big issue but if it gets any slower than this i mean i met a couple of guys out on the trail the last couple of times out on these hondas and they had actually just come from some hondas they one guy came from a honda rx one guy came from a yz a yz 450 fx and and they had moved over to some two strokes and they're like, man, I, we just love how much cooler they ride. They're just like, we were, we would boil over all the time on our four strokes, you know? And so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to do any sort of quasi technical stuff on your, on your four stroke, you're going to need a radiator fan on that bike in order to keep the thing cool. And I notice it too, just with the heat coming off the motor, just, especially if I'm wearing vented pants. I can really, really tell just all that heat that is kind of flowing back, you know, kind of between your legs. You're like, dang, there's a lot more heat here. And so it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, but yeah, as far as the boys, what's happening now, I'm following Case. Uh, Case has hardly ridden at all in the last six months. He's been doing so much basketball, just basketball, basketball, basketball. So his older brother there, uh, Connor, was up leading the way and just doing amazing. Connor's been riding his bike his dirt bike quite a bit more and they're both on 85 two strokes um i think connor my older son he's 15 or 15 he's 13 he's gonna turn 14 here in less than a month and i'm gonna be looking i think to put him on the larger wheel set on his 85 so this is case in front of me right now he's he's uh 11 right now um he'll be turning 12 later this year but connor being uh, almost 14 he's he's still kind of a little bit behind his growth spurt but he's grown enough in the last little bit that i think i'm going to go with the larger wheels which you can get one of the nice things about these ktm two strokes is you can get them in a um a 17 inch and a 14 inch so 17 inch front wheel 14 inch rear wheel and then you can ju you can basically give them a new upgrade a bike just by buying another wheel set which is the 19 inch front and the 16 inch rear, which is what we're going to be moving to with uh, Connor real quick. You know, it's also funny because we, I said in, uh, I did a video a couple, maybe a week or so ago about top three tips for dads, um, talking about how, you know, you'll have problems out there on the trail. You're going to have tip overs and things. Same thing happened with Connor. So Connor, you don't even get to see Connor in this video because he's just clipping up there. He was just pulling away from case the entire time because he's older and he's been riding a lot more case just hasn't been riding. And so case couldn't hold on to him. Case is doing phenomenal here, but Connor was just pulling away. Well then guess what? Here's what happens with dirt bikes. And it basically, it's pretty much inevitable you start to get your confidence, 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 and then some, and then the dirt bike gods come up and just humble you a little bit. And that happened to Connor um, about an hour after what you're seeing right now. He's just going up, you know, a trail, just a, something, it's rocky, but he was going up this trail and he got kind of, I don't know, I didn't see it, but I think he got kind of knocked off line and then he went down into like kind of some rocky boulder stuff and then boom, he gets tossed off the bike to the left-hand side, left hand side, slams his arm on some really like sharp edges on some rocks. And I mean, he was in probably the most pain I've seen him be in on a dirt bike. And I thought... I, I thought he might have broken his arm, just like the amount, of, the, the amount of pain that he was in and his body language and his breathing and everything. I was like, dang, we might have a broken arm and we're out here kind of in the middle of nowhere. And we just sat down, we made some plans. Well, I'm like, let's just sit here for 10 minutes, just see how it, you know, what it feels like. Let's drink some water. I gave him a little bit of ibuprofen because uh, I knew it was gonna be swelling. Um, and we sat there for a bit and he was able to just kind of limp at home after sitting there for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but it's just like, I'm always saying it, the, you, you get all this confidence and you think I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. And the next thing you know, it comes up and it, it kind of bites you a little bit. And I loved how, how case just like charged up that hill right there. Those obstacles are way bigger than they look on this uh, point of view camera. 
especially for that um, you know 17 inch front wheel the bigger the the bigger the wheels get the on these bikes the boys are able to do it better and better um, and it, it's just it's just really fun to watch and these 85 two strokes that they're on are absolutely incredible bikes they're so good but I did feel bad for Connor for tipping over and I, I felt bad that it kind of put a damper on his day um, and sometimes like with him his personality is if, if that if something like that happens to him where he kind of gets knocked down or whatever it, 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 it affects him mentally you know whereas case the one that you're looking at right now on the screen he gets knocked knocked down and and he he has a little bit different mindset it kind of pisses him off and then he just like redoubles his efforts and and he goes and and both of those you know mindsets can can really be good in the right situation for for the boys but yeah it's just kind of fun to see it's fr i mean it's fun to see them progress but it it can be frustrating at times and we just have to be patient with these kids realize that they're kids interact with each one of them a little bit differently based on their personality types and and it's going to work but uh yeah the honda was super fun out here today um on on this particular ride i'm really really enjoying the hondas i love how stable and balanced they are i don't want to harp on it too much but i do wish that they had six speed gearboxes doesn't affect you that much on a trail like well it doesn't affect you at all on on a trail like what you've seen right here on this video but there are literally times when i am still i'm on trails like you get onto a two-track trail and, and it opens up a bit and i'm clicking up in fifth gear and i'm like where's my other gear like i want to go a little bit faster i don't want to have to have my rpms quite this high and then it, it occurs every time you hit a dirt road you know because i don't want to have to be like having my rpm super high to be able to go 50 60 miles an hour down the road and with this bike with the five speed motocross you know close ratio gearbox you're you get into fifth gear right off the bat and you're only going 45 miles an hour and then to go 50 60 you're just like revving the bike out and i don't love that i don't love having to have the bike revved out that high so anyway good times on the bike uh it, this will be a sweepstakes bike in june so stay tuned for that and uh, until next time, uh, leave a single track. Thanks, everybody.